Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Hillbilly Military Modeling here and in this video we're going to be building our M6 gun motor carriage WC55 by Tallery in 135th scale. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first issue that we've run into so far <laughs> is that our sprues are not tabbed out so I went ahead and used masking tape and labeled them so that We'll be able to find them in a hurry. I also went ahead while the parts are still attached to the screws. I uh, took my modeling putty and went ahead and filled the sinkholes and uh, these little dips that are in these panels so that the putty will have plenty of time to dry. And we'll be able to go ahead and sand those off and get the parts ready for assembly when we get to them. So now we're ready for step one. Uh, this will be the front cross member, the transmission, transfer, fuel tank, bumperettes, and exhaust. <laughs> First thing we need to do is clean up all the flash and smooth out the frame rails. And that comes out pretty easy. Now the rear cross member, I had to square that so that the bumperettes when we glue them that they will be parallel to the ground instead of pointing down. Next up we're going to work on this exhaust. Now the tip is rounded, which is not very accurate. So I take a file and I file it off nice and flat. And then I go ahead and drill a hole in it so that um, it looks like a tailpipe now. And there we've completed that step. So on to the next. Here we're going to assemble our winch and put it on the frame. Now make sure that the frame orientation is correct when you go to set the winch in place or you'll be putting it on upside down and it's, it's not going to fit. Uh, also, make sure that you don't get any glue on the pins that hold the winch drum in place. That way you can spin it. That'll come important later on when we go to put uh, the cable on it. Next up, we're going to put on our front and rear springs, our PTO, and our shaft that goes to the front winch. And that goes on with no problems, just your normal cleanup of your mold seam lines. In our next step, uh, we're going to be assembling our axles and installing those. And the only problem that I had here was the inside curved surface of 28 and 29C. Uh, they needed to be squared up so that they would fit properly. That would, that's the steering knuckle portion here. And then that lets that go together just fine. And next up is the rear axle. No problems there. Now experience has showed me that I needed to check and make sure that the wheels will fit the axles. So that's what I'm doing here. And they fit okay. There's no problem there. But we do have a small problem here. The rear drive shaft is not long enough. So in order to fix that, what I decided to do is take a uh, 0.050 inch or a 1.28 millimeter polystyrene sheet thickness and glue it onto the front of the differential there, the input cone, and drill a hole in the middle of it. And I also shaped it to the cone. And now it fits just fine. A little bit of modification, but I didn't want to mess up the drive shaft geometry. So that's why I did that instead of making the drive shaft longer. Now it's time for our front clip here, and that'll be the hood and front fenders, uh, the side engine covers. The radiator goes in that too. Uh, now we had these little. Uh, dips in the plastic that needed to be filled so I go ahead and I'll sand those off and I also have to address these sprue gates on the hood and trim that out and sand that down smooth. 
Now the front clip is complete, all except for the front grill. We're going to leave that off uh, until after we've painted everything. So this kit's moving along rather nicely, I think. Uh, next up, we're going to assemble the uh, floor pan with the uh, shifters and the seats. And then we're going to mount that to the frame. Now, I did not glue the seat cushions to the seat tubs. That'll make it easier for us to paint and weather them later. So next up, we're going to install this uh, front clip and our dash. First, we have to put the dash in. And the only fit issue I had is where this inner fender extends over the frame rail. I had to sand that back a little bit. And I did create a little ugly mark here with, to me, extra thin when I glued the dash panel in. Uh, just make sure that if this happens, and it's going to happen to you sooner or later, um, let it dry completely and then just buff it off. And here we are, front clips installed and we've put in our kick panels. We're ready for the next step. Here we're going to put together our wheels and I just want to point out that um, I decided to use the spare tire so the running board is going to be the one with the dip in it and not the straight one in this particular case. Our wheels and rims are a two-piece affair here with the tires. Now we do have a locator pin and a hole for it, but the hole is a little bit larger than the locating pin. So you're going to want to make sure that the tread is staggered. Now our running boards do not have a positive lock-in spot on the frame. And I want to make sure that these are even and they match up to the bed of the truck. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put together a little bit of the bed and check this fit so we can locate them properly. So what I've decided to do is put these inner fender pieces uh, onto the bed. Um, and of course in typical Italian fashion, you have to true up these edges. Uh, on these parts in order to get them to fit properly and this will allow us to set this on the frame and make sure that uh, it fits properly. Uh, it's very important that we test fit all our pieces. As you can see here this uh, outer panel for the bed it doesn't fit very well it's not square that's why you need to true these edges up. And here's where I find out that the bed doesn't fit the frame. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to do some adjusting. This bed has to fit properly in order for me to line up our running boards. And the problem that we're having here is that the tabs inside the frame don't engage the, the, the locator slots. And so the bed is kind of kind of cocked up. So we're going to have to do some trimming. And as you can see here, there's also a, a, a tab that sticks down on the bottom of the bed that's supposed to contact the frame, and it's kind of way off. So we're going to have to trim out a little bit here on the inside of the bed on the bottom. So I take my saw and I make a couple of relief cuts. And now I'm going to take and trim this back. So I trim out some of it. And we test fit again. And trim out a little bit more. And test fit and I'm still not quite lining up with these blocks on the frame with these locator tabs so there's a little bit more that needs to come out of it so I'm going to remove these little triangular pieces
And then after test fitting, the kick panels are slightly in the way, so I'll go ahead and notch that out. All right, so public service announcement. <laughs> Who knew that a hobby knife was sharp? <laughs> so I guess, uh, yeah, be careful, guys, uh, when you're trimming away bits and pieces of model, pl model plastic there. Anyway, we are successful, and now the bed fits properly. And that's important because we really need the geometry to be right so that the cutout for our wheel is aligned right over top of the tire. So now I'm just going to go ahead and build up the rest of the bed and we're going to mount the bed onto the vehicle and make sure that everything's correct and it looks good and our running boards are in place and we're ready to move on to the next step. So now we're going to start uh, attaching the accessories. Uh, 89B is a part that we're not going to be using because we've chosen to put the spare tire on instead. And now we're going to continue with the other side of the vehicle. As you can see here, the fuel can that uh, Italery has supplied us, it doesn't look very good. So I went to my spares box and got a fuel can and I have a fuel can holder too from another kit and I simply sanded down the can so it would actually fit the carrier. Now that fuel can, the black one, didn't have uh, the third carry handle which I replaced with some um, stretch sprue and I think it looks pretty good. One detail that we are missing is going to be the strap that holds the uh, fuel can down and I just make this out of a piece of masking tape and that will do it. So now we have a decision to make and that's these scabbards and these rifles. I don't like the looks of them and so I'm just not going to install them. Time to assemble our main armament and of course with most uh, we have to drill out the barrel and that'll give us the look that we need. Now it's important to make sure that you get it in the middle otherwise it's not going to look right. Now this cannon comes with a uh, guard for the gunner. That's a recoil guard. Keeps the gunner from getting behind the gun. But, as you can see in this picture here, that guard has these perforations through it. So what I've decided to do is to drill those out. And it's fairly easy to do. Uh, it's going to give us some added detail. Uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to look pretty good, I think, on the model. So we have some uh, plastic burrs here on the back side of the shield uh, that are easily cleaned up with a oversized drill bit just lightly spun on the back side of these holes and that'll just trim it right up. It's really easy to do. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, it's going to be a nice addition uh, to our gun. And now we can put the main armament onto the vehicle. Now we're not going to glue this down. It'll be easier to paint. And as you can see, this recoil guard here looks really good with those holes drilled through. So I'm glad I did that. Next up, I have to fix this mirror. We've got a couple of uh, ejector pin marks on it um, that need to be attended to. And here we are. Um, so the main gun is not glued to the chassis and we've left off all the wheels, uh, the seat cushions, the front grille, the steering wheel, uh, let's see, there's a bucket for it as well. Um, all this will be painted separately and weathered separately and then installed after we get to the finishing phase of the model and that'll be in the very next video so you guys stay tuned. Um, 
if you like what you've seen in this video, please leave me a comment and let me know. Uh, and if you have any ideas on how I can better improve these for you guys, uh, let me know that too. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more of this type of content, uh, please go ahead, subscribe and like, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified um, whenever I post a new video. So with that guys, thanks for watching, stay safe.